co-host, co-host of Pictures in an Exhibition. And I'm also uh, the co-producer of the Art Salon, that is a, uh, an a series of events in the Pioneer Valley uh, and featuring local artists. But here we are at A3 in Amherst, and uh, A3 Gallery stands for Amherst Artist Alliance that was founded in 2002. It has members, and the members are exhibiting on a regular basis here, and sometimes they have curated shows. Today, we are talking with Constance Hamilton. Welcome, Constance. Hello. So nice to see you. Nice to have you here. Thank you. So I stopped here in this, uh, in this gallery and uh, saw not only images on the wall, but I immediately realized this was a whole installation, a Gesamtkunstwerk of pieces of art that are all connected and, uh, and have all a story that is also connected. Constance, yes. what is your story? The story is about the, the myth that we all know, which is about Icarus falling into the sea. And the story before that is his, he and his father were locked in the labyrinth the father had built the labyrinth, and so he knew the only way to get out was to go skyward. And he, was, he decided the best way would be to create wings for himself and his son, and they would fly up and out of the labyrinth. And they did that. He had warned his son ever, ever so often not to get too close to the sun. But as we all know, the sun did get too close to the sun, and the wax that held the wings together began to melt, and he fell into the sea. So this is the story of human hubris, of uh, parental, of, you know, of uh, what's called disobedience from the children, yes. of escape, yes. and, uh, and of tragedy. Yes. So here you have all these various different images, abstract and some of them not so abstract, coming together in this lovely exhibition. Uh, and you have this connecting theme, but all the images are really different from each other. Mm -hmm. For instance, this one here behind us is an unframed uh, canvas. Yes. So can you tell us about this very abstract piece? Uh, I work very abstractly, usually. However, um, as you'll see with other pieces, they're not so abstract. Uh, this was just a piece that came up and out. And it took me possibly three days to complete the piece. Um, but it was a wonderful, wonderful painting experience. And when I started to put the, this particular exhibit together, I was thrilled to see that it very much was connected to other pieces in the show, yeah. So now we are in the most uh, prominent piece of the exhibition, which uh, is very much uh, in your plain view as you enter the space. It is a big sail and it provokes the shape of a sailboat and a sail, but not only that, it provokes only also the sky, the turbulent, dark, sky and the ocean. So Constance, you just told me a little bit about Daedalus and his skills. Tell me more about him and what he was famous for. Well, Daedalus was famous and he was well respected by the real, the gods on Olympus, although he was not a god. He designed sails of all sizes was one of the things he did. And a question I asked myself after reading the story 
was what did Daedalus do after his son fell into the sea? Did he stay by the ocean side? Or did he get in a sailboat and sail on the waters looking for the feathers of his son? So now we are uh, in front of a print that was done earlier, and it does not necessarily belong to the series of Daedalus and the, uh, and the myth, but it is a beautiful piece that Constance did early on in her career. Yes. That was at Pratt, right? Yes, yes. So this is a print one out of five. Yes, yeah. So, and there's a B in it. Yes. Tell yeah. us about that. Okay. Sorry. Well, the reason I, I included the print, actually, was because it was done by the ocean side, and there is a feather here, and I started to think that it was actually this print that caused me to see how the different pieces were related yeah. that keep coming up. It is true that there, I included a, a, a small drawing of a bee over here and under the half moon. Um, I, th I think that the, the bee is not directly related to the story at all, but overall, the, being by the ocean side, with the feather, and we also have the wing of the butterfly. Um, and, and so the, that was my thinking all around. Yes, and so now we are at a piece from 1983, which fits very nicely into the whole arrangement of works in this gallery, even though it's not the most recent, but it also has to do with wings. Constance, what are the wings in here? Because this is a very abstract image, yes. and I would not necessarily see the wings in here. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Well, the reason I, I chose it as a, a, a good piece, I wanted something that reflected escaping from the labyrinth before the fall. And this piece uh, I've had for a long while, uh, it always, for me, was a feeling of being in flight, of moving. Here are the, the wings and, and some of the parts of a bird. It made me think of a bird flying across the sky. And so that's why I've included it beside the labyrinth. So we have now behind us the labyrinth and Daedalus's labyrinth, which I think I could get out of. <laughs> <laughs> but we are, you know, it's, a, it's an abstraction of the labyrinth. Yeah. And uh, it is a whole geometric composition in this work. Yes. And the labyrinth is only one part of it. Yes. Uh, so what were you having in mind when you created this work? What happened with this painting, I was beginning a series of geometric abstraction. And I started the painting and I was working on it and the labyrinth appeared on its own. I, I didn't consciously think of it. It was just time for it to appear. And so I included it. Uh, it was always a bit of a mystery to me because it was not directly related to the story of Icarus. Um, and I have other paintings of the series, but the labyrinth did not appear again. Yeah. So that is, you're working a lot with intuition. Yes. And you are working and then things come up and do you, would you say you're working things out from the subconscious that appear then on these images? Yeah, ab absolutely. I, I trust my intuition a lot when I'm working and 
I let things happen that sometimes I have to go back and replace or change, but sometimes I need to see it on the canvas when, before I make a decision. Now we are standing in front of an unusual piece that just caught my eye. And uh, I saw this was a poem by Mary Oliver titled The Swan. And here it is in a very you know, cursive handwriting. The paper is cut a little raggedy and not quite um, straight. And it looks like a memento. And down here, it has a C on it. Constance, Constance that's you, right? That's <laughs> and, uh, and what is this poem all about? Why did you hang it? It was another piece that was very related to being by the ocean and the birds and the swans because they use swans' feathers. And so, um, and this was sent to me by a very dear friend. She was a well-known artist in this area. Her name was Terry Rumble, uh, Terry Rumble Walker, actually. And she has since passed away, but it's, for me, a gem. Now we are looking at the swan that's right next to the poem. <laughs> and here is that swan as a symbol of uh, Daedalus flight, yeah. as a, uh, a symbol of taking flight and going into the sky. But then again, there's also the ocean, almost threatening on top of the swan. Yeah. You made the choice of hanging it this way and hanging this image this way, or do they belong together as a set, just like that? They do belong together. In this instance, I was imagining all the while that the swan was searching, searching, searching. And here was this huge ocean behind the swan. And it was just in the thought and the effort that this wonderful bird would be wanting to also have an answer to the end of Icarus. Very difficult story to make peace with. There's another set of images, and that is just the ocean in shades of green and gray. And it's almost um, photographic from a distance, and it's it's it echoes the previous one with the swan, and it just is an image to me. It seems like I am on the ocean, and I'm looking for feathers, and all I see is ocean. And it was this, the constant movement of the ocean, and can you get a hold of it? Can, and, and so it's, it's always a, a bit of a struggle, or maybe more than that. Um, I worked with different colors, thinking I could bring out different, different aspects of the ocean. And I was always aware that I was working abstractly. That was the part that kept me going with it, that here was this very real large ocean, but at the same time, there was an abstract quality that I was getting a hold of which I think in some ways oceans are pretty abstract. Yes. Uh, I can't wrap my head around an ocean. <laughs> it's like too big. <laughs> so that, that wraps up our conversation. And uh, I would like to all invite you to come to A3 Gallery in Amherst and see the exhibition, which is up until, when is it up? Uh, the 29th of March. The 29th yes. of March. Please come and see it. Bye-bye.